Hi everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets, how to increase your market business success, and in our current climate, maximize safety while providing people with fresh food. Farmer's markets are essential. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer or food maker selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. On today's episode of Tent Talk, we're talking about the current climate at farmer's markets, de-escalating conflicts, and supporting your team. I'm one of your hosts, Bridget Myers. I've spent years as an on-site farmer's market manager, and I'm the education coordinator at Farmer's Market Pros. And I'm Kat Fields-White, director of San Diego Markets, still an active farmer's market manager, founder of Farmer's Market Pros, and host of the Farmer's Market Pros community, and Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference. And I'm Justine marzoni Mead, Tent Talk producer, marketing director for Farmer's Market Pros, and logistics coordinator for Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference 2021, coming up in just a few weeks, live online, March 15th through 18th. And I gotta remind you that early bird pricing is still available, but it ends soon on Sunday, January 31st. So reserve your space now. That's right. Get that worm. Get Get an early bird. Get it in. Don't just be a bird. (laughs) Don't (laughs) Don't be a bird. Be an early bird. I mean, you can be a bird. We welcome the birds after the 31st. (laughs) (laughs) Well, welcome back to Tent Talk, everyone. Today, we're chatting about current farmer's market conditions, managing conflicts, and supporting your team and yourself during these interesting times. They are interesting. We had such high hopes for 2021. (laughs) It's off to a curious start. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, we're calling it December 40th right now. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's what it is. It's not looking too much different from 2020, and we don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> but, like, what did we expect? Yeah. For being real. I mean, really. It's, it's not like the sun's going to come up yeah. and everything's going to disappear, right, on the yeah. on January 1st? No, that is what I expected. <laughs> it is? That's what you were holding out The Gregorian calendar did not come through. I thought it did. <laughs> Clearly, we're following the wrong calendar. Yeah. But it's still early. We yeah. Have, we have high hopes. Right? Yeah. Good turn around. This vaccine yeah. is on its way. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Vaccine's rolling out there. That's right. I mean, good things are happening. But. Yeah. I actually was on a um, call a couple of days ago, and there's a lot of states where farmers market participants, farmers market management teams, farmers and vendors at markets are all being considered in that same group with essential workers, grocery stores, and will be eligible to get the vaccine. In California, we call it 1B. In different states, it's called different phases, but mm-hmm. it's sort of the next phase after, um, typically in a lot of states, it's after healthcare workers, frontline kind of first responders, and then uh, a lot of people, ha- nursing homes come next, yeah. and then it goes into other essential workers, including us. That's so, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, and I tried to figure out the like timeline the other day. I just got confused myself into a a circle like just like going around dither. yeah i was like am i at the very end i mean am i toward the middle and the well, i think as a farmer's market person mm-hmm. um it sounds like at least in our state you're going to be i'm going to say february or march um sometime Great. in february very first part of march is probably when our number is going to come up mm-hmm. so to speak bring it That's on it. baby <laughs> right bring it i'll do it live at the conference <laughs> <laughs> like biden yeah there's <laughs> cameras that would be kind of it. amazing, actually. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a session on everyone just getting their vaccine. <laughs> that would be awesome. We're we're doing it. It. We don't really want to wait that long. But no, no. yeah. <laughs> but if we haven't gotten it by then, we are totally <laughs> doing it on screen at the conference. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So that's some good news. Yeah, very good, news. good news. I know. I told my husband he's very last, I think. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's in his late 30s, healthy, not an essential worker. Sorry, buddy. He does travel. Yeah. He does essential travel. Does that count? He is considered essential travel, but it's not like in the health care. I don't know. It's in the financial sector. I don't know. Anyways, I'll get it before him, I think. We're racing. So, (laughs) there we go. (laughs) Who gets custody of the kids? Which phase? (laughs) I know. The kids are last, I think. Kids are. Do kids yeah. come in? They're like haven't really approved it for kids yet, so they're gonna see. Oh, yeah, like under sixteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. My older kid will get it, I guess. Yeah. Actually, they're saying like twenty to thirty year olds are in like the are getting it sooner than later because they're, they're saying spreaders. because they are a they're more commonly asymptomatically spreading it, but I think mm. it's because they're more commonly just spreading they're it. Spreading it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's fine. Well, and she'll she'll be up at the top of the list because she not only is a college student, yes, but she works at a farmer's market. Right, double whammy. Maybe this is a way that some market managers can get some (laughs) more employees. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, put your your kids to work. Put your (laughs) use us. You want a vaccine? Use us for the vaccine. That's right. 
Okay, that answers all of our questions about how to attract more volunteers. Yeah. yeah. Explain to them that farmers market workers get <laughs> vaccines early. And then they'll yeah. be like, why? Well, What's we'll the have danger? to check it out with <laughs> yeah. our, our local health representatives. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. And, be, and even though it would be really fun if there was a national, federal, consistent plan, they're still not <laughs> yeah. so far. So yeah, we'll uh, see. for now, it's going to be dependent on your state and sometimes yeah. your county exactly. or city. Yeah. So be sure and check uh, check what that plan is in your local area. There doesn't seem to be one consistent policy across the board throughout the country. Yeah, and if you're a market manager that has been contacted by your local health agency and or you have already gotten a vaccine, let us know. We, yeah, we're keep curious. us updated. Yeah. We want to know how that policy is kind of implementing on the ground in different parts of the country. Yeah, yeah and how that rollout's happening. So I know Virginia Farmers Market Association just sent a thing out to its managers and told them they've got an open dock and they're supposed to enter the names of the people that participate in their markets that want the vaccine. Oh, yeah. And they're using that to take to the governor who's given kind of a preliminary approval for that group to be sort of early. Mm -hmm. Uh, In California, we're still in an earlier stage than that, but we are sending information to our governor and state health department to point out, to remind them Because I think a lot of them have sort of forgotten that the reason we're still open is because we're an essential service, like a grocery store, Mm -hmm. to remind them that we are in that grocery store category. And when those folks start getting vaccinated, not to forget farmers markets. Yeah, Don't forget us. Yeah. So keep it top of mind with your local agencies. That's right. So we'll keep an eye on that. What else? (laughs) <laughs> oh, I just want to talk about good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's way more fun to talk about than some of the yeah, other topics we have. Thanks for joining us this week. <laughs> See you We're next done. time. And everything's bright and sunny. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Um, no, what we also want to talk to about is conflict resolution at the market. Yeah, we're hearing from managers across the country that they're experiencing some of the same things we are uh-huh. in terms of sometimes uncooperative customers. Yeah, it seems like every, you know, for a while it was like tough at the beginning, for a long while. Mm. And then we kind of, we hit a little stride where it seemed like people were getting it and being respectful. They had, you know, figured out how to safely shop at a market by following the rules and wearing their masks and buying their veggies and going home and thanking us. And I think that maybe like the magic of the holiday season has worn off and (laughs) now people are like, January is like the Monday of the year where it's kind of like... Dang, the, you know. That's a good explanation, Justine. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like people during the holidays were, like, giving us gifts and being very <laughs> thankful, and there was kind of this magic in the air of, like, you know, thanking people for their essential workers and yada, yada, yada. And now everybody's just, like, <laughs> at least it. me, like, I feel very stir-crazy. I'm mm-hmm. finally, you know, for a while I was like, I'm just home a lot, like... <laughs> fixing up my house and like hanging out with my cat and now I'm like I'm over it and I think a lot of people have kind of hit that wall again and it's you know also there's a lot of things going on in the news in the world and people are just like frazzled and upset Mm -hmm. and they're taking it out on their nice little farmer's market (laughs) on perfect strangers (laughs) yeah true I think it is and especially like in San Diego we might be seeing it more than other places because we have been dropped back into a really restrictive tier. We're on a stay-at-home order, so like restaurants are super closed, the ones that are following the order, and and like there's a lot of restriction, like Airbnbs can't rent out, so people aren't like seeing their family or they aren't doing staycations and things like that. It just feels really restrictive here, and I think people's nerves are just fried they're fried and, yeah. and you know one of those five stages of grief is anger yep and i think yeah, there's a lot of people that are in that there. stage because yeah. i mean we've all been sort of grieving the loss of our quote-unquote normal lives mm-hmm. and you know, what we're yeah. used to and and i think a lot of people are in that stage and yeah. i think it's also easy to forget that like along with all of these things are a lot of like economic challenges people have been out of work or maybe True. they you mm-hmm. know There's other stressors in their life. People are trapped at home with their kids and their partners, Mm -hmm. or they just can't see anybody. And so, like, all of that is manifesting in wacky ways, whether it be behavior, mental health, or just all of the stuff that we're noticing because we interact with the public yeah, directly face-to-face. And it's hard. It's hard on us. It's hard on our staff. Mm -hmm. And... We have to find creative ways to manage it without yeah. just like calling nine one one because that sucks too. And like, and that's not always that doesn't always fix respond. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they don't come. It doesn't really fix the problem. Yeah, I just kind of like passing it along right. to somebody else, then. and it causes more stress for everybody, yeah. even right. the person calling nine one one. I true. We did have to call nine one one. We it, did. That guy was just 
drunk. He was wasted at the market. Yeah. That was his problem. He wasn't trying to be... He actually had a mask on. <laughs> did he have a mask on? But yes. he did not have shoes on. No it, shoes, but he had a mask. He had shoes by the time the police got there. Oh, yeah. He, had like to know where he wasn't those came wearing from. shoes when I saw him at 6 a.m. Yeah. And I talked to him about not wearing shoes. And then he fell asleep for a while. And then he put his shoes on. He put his shoes on. He woke up on the wrong side of the beer. He <laughs> drank a six-pack on the curb by the market. Anyways, oh, we my should gosh, yeah. write a book. <laughs> so, at, at least it was a locally San Diego brew. That's right. It was. It was? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Don't drink that Shop Budweiser small. by our market. <laughs> anyway, the police actually responded very quickly, and we yes. want to throw out a big a shout out on that particular incident to, yes. to the local police force. They were that great. That particular officer yeah. was very nice and helpful. Yeah. They were. And quick. Anyway, so <laughs> what are some of the conflict resolution, resolution um, tools that we have in our tool belt as market managers? Um, I think one thing we need to think about, I think partly it's that we've gotten a little bit complacent because we've been mm-hmm. doing this for so long now that we've, I think of us or at least a lot of our team members have gotten to the point where we kind of think people know the rules. Yeah. So yeah. whereas at the beginning, and by the beginning I mean, you know, six months of, <laughs> of last year, um, we were really careful to, we have everything on signs, but we also verbally sort of did a little quiz to each and every person that walked through our entrance and said, remember, knowing you're drinking in the market, keep your mask on your face, uh, don't touch anything. And I think that we've maybe gotten a little bit overconfident about whether or not people know those rules. And mm-hmm. and also we're responding to the eye rolls and things from people who do know the rules and don't want to hear them again. And so yeah. we we're not quite as consistent, I think, some of us on um, talking that through with people as they're coming in. And then then when the next person who's letting them in at a, another place or letting them out or having an interaction with them points out the rules, they're upset because it's not a consistent thing. So yeah. and just like market rules in the best of times, um, the way to manage these things are really clear expectations that you let everybody know what's expected of them mm-hmm. and then really consistent enforcement because if it looks like you're letting one person you're making an exception for them, and then you're not making an exception for the next person. That's where a lot of conflict arises. Yeah, and I think these people get embarrassed when they get kind of caught not following sure. the rules that they didn't really know they were supposed to be following. Like, sure, there's a sign, but if you're outside, there's lots of things to look at at a farmer's market. You might not be looking down and reading every sign. I understand yeah. that. And so if some if a staffer comes up to you and says, hey, 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 you can't do this, they get embarrassed, and then they get combative because of that embarrassment or because they don't want to follow that rule or they didn't know they were supposed to be following that rule. So I think remembering that we need to inform and informing will help kind of subdue a lot of that kind of pushback that people are giving for most people. Yep. (laughs) Some people don't care about that, but... (laughs) There are some people that just are purposely, as we know, Mm -hmm. resisting wearing masks for what however in their minds science and politics have gotten confused um they're deciding to not wear a mask Mm -hmm. uh and and so that's an issue there's some people that are approaching that in that way and there's and then that gets confusing because some of them have funny cards that they've downloaded from the internet or or make statements (laughs) that they you know somebody on the interwebs has suggested that they make um talking about ada issues and that kind of thing yeah and this is an odd ADA issue mm-hmm. because in order to accommodate somebody with a particular disability, in this case, you're endangering another group of people. That's not typically the case when you're dealing with somebody that's got a mobility issue or other mm-hmm. kinds of uh, Disability Act covered things. Mm-hmm. Those things don't usually put somebody else in danger. Yeah. So it's a really tricky thing to navigate. and. And what seems to be what we're hearing in terms of best practices is the best response you can have is de-escalate the situation. We'll talk about that in a second. But then be sure that you've got methods set up to accommodate them in some way. So Mm -hmm. um, provide them with a list of vendors that they can contact outside the market. Or in some cases, we've even had vendors come to the barricade and sell to them while they're outside the market and not inside the market. That's not necessarily the very best accommodation. I actually had one of those last week, and it meant that I was spending a lot of time with somebody without a mask on. Exactly, uh, yeah. Because they were standing there unmasked. Our vendors mm-hmm. were approaching them and bringing them items because we didn't want to let them into the market. But it meant that I had contact with them for a for an extended amount of time, mm-hmm. and various vendors were having contact with them without a mask. So it wasn't great, but it was something that we could do. So curbside pickup, if you've got that kind of a system, um, somebody that doesn't want a mask should definitely be pointed in that direction. 
Or if a farm has CSA programs, right. mm-hmm. um, maybe have a list of your vendors that do a delivery or any other alternate non-farmer's market, you know, at the market things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're a farmer's market that does like pre-order, you know, maybe have a list of that at your info booth. Exactly. Those are all things that you can do to accommodate them. And that's what you want to do. I mean, if at all possible, what you want to do is not just say, no, you can't shop here, obviously. You want to have an alternative to suggest, and that's just Mm -hmm. actually part of just general conflict resolution for that matter, is you want to give people a choice. Yeah. We can't do this, and how would you like us to solve that for you? Would you prefer to pre-order online, or would you prefer to go sit down in the park and have your partner shop for you? (laughs) Yeah. So let them make their own choice. I mean, that's that's kind of a thing that you do. Yeah, give them agency in the situation. It's kind of like parenting. I I was just going to say, I I didn't want to say the same way you deal with a toddler or an elementary school child, but that's kind of the same thing. I do. I mean, I don't treat them like children, but I do take a lot of my, like, parenting tactics into farmer's market shoppers because I don't want to, you know, get into a big conflict with them. I don't want to end up yelling at them or putting them time out, for, so to speak. But I Boy, do. that's <laughs> tempting. Yeah, so I'd love to. <laughs> if only we could. <laughs> but say, oh, would you like to wear this outfit or this outfit? You're not going to wear your pajamas, but you can wear this or right. this. So you, it's you like. You can't shop without a mask. Yes. But you can get what you need from the market this way or this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And legally, offering reasonable accommodation is the legal and right thing that you can do. That's right. That, that we're really. Um, looking into it and have learned that and it's this these are unprecedented times so that the typical ada where you can't like quote unquote refuse service to someone with a disability that applies but it applies in a different way because this is an airborne virus right yeah. so that's just the way it is it doesn't the normal things don't apply and little things downloaded off the internet and whatnot honestly just ignore all those things they're not valid what you have to do is look at ADA resources, look at legal toolkits that are Yeah, can you put tell together. us about this? Yeah. Yeah, so this is an amazing document from the Farmer's Market. It's part of the Farmer's Market Legal Toolkit, which mm-hmm. was developed by, you know, Vermont Law School and Farmer's Market Coalition and one other organization that I'm not finding right now. I, know, I, I should mention them and give them credit, but um, <laughs> it's a, a great team of people that have put this together. And we've relied on the Legal Toolkit for a lot of things in the past, free speech issues and, you know, a lot of things that they really help Farmer's Markets navigate. But they've put out a really wonderful piece recently um, called Face Mask Requirements and the Americans with Disability Act, and they explain how you can create a mass policy, how you can um, how you can enforce that, what kind of accommodations you can make. There's a great little checklist survey on here mm-hmm. so that you can make your plan before that's happening right in front of you. It's, it's a really good exercise to figure out what your policies are going to be and how you're going to offer to accommodate people before you have somebody angry standing in your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it really... is so hard oh. in those yeah. moments, especially, you know, for our markets, it's an early morning market. Oftentimes we like, we're there when it's before it's light out and you've been standing there in the sun. And then, you know, at least me, you guys are like really cool and calm and collected. And I just get like, <laughs> because I don't have kids, I just get like <laughs> freaked out and like fluttery. And I'm always like, oh, let me go with you. <laughs> it's so hard when you're confronted with somebody mm-hmm. and they're in your face without a mask yeah. and they're upset at you if you don't already have a really, really clear procedure or kind of those talking points that you can memorize and just have, you know, in, in your back pocket ready to go. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. So having a plan ahead of time, having a resource like this is so helpful and make sure your staff is trained on it because then when you are presented with somebody, you don't look unprepared. I think mm-hmm. that's the thing is like, a lot of these people think that they, you know, who are challenging you in the moment already have the upper hand if you're not prepared because yeah. they have probably... Yeah, they've arrived with a plan. They are, they're they ready yeah. to go. Yeah. Right. And so you're already kind of like a few steps behind them. Yeah. Um, but if you have something like this, it's super helpful. And also um, one of the, the last pages, there's a little um, area where if if you have... you can, It gives you notes where you can like re- kind of keep track of these things where if mm-hmm. you do kind of have a conflict you can make notes so your farmer's market group can kind of keep a record in case there's any follow-up complaints, and we'll talk (laughs) about that later, Mm -hmm. um, that you just have documentation. So that way if somebody decides that they want to take it up with your boss or they want to go complain about you somewhere else, you have documentation that 
Yeah, like anything mm-hmm. that happens at a market yeah. that's out of the ordinary, an incident report is never, <laughs> a, never a bad idea. Yeah. But and this at um, farmersmarketlegaltoolkit.org, where we're, we're looking at this wonderful packet, <laughs> uh, one of the things that's in here is a list from the CDC, from the Centers for Disease Control, that explains who shouldn't wear a mask or who shouldn't be required to wear a mask, uh, and then steps to take as an alternative to allowing them in the market and putting other people at risk if they actually fall into one of these categories where it's legitimate that they shouldn't be wearing a mask. Yeah, and I think this will be a great tool to have to give to our people working the entrances because it's acknowledging that some people can't wear a mask. I think that some people get combative because they are trying to kind of like scream at us that they can't wear a mask for whatever reason and they think that we think they can just slap one on. So we're acknowledging that it's true. Some people probably have a difficulty wearing it for whatever, for these reasons, right? So if you have trouble breathing, um, anyone who's unconscious, definitely don't put a mask on them. <laughs> that is on this they list. They also should be shopping at the farmer's market. <laughs> also, so good can't to, really shop yeah. things. Right. But anyone with sensory, cognitive, behavioral issues, so that is completely understandable. Those people should not be wearing masks, and that makes sense. But also, that does not give them an excuse or it does not have does not give them ground to stand on to enter your business. Correct, because so. it does the other end of this. Unlike mm-hmm. most disability issues, is that they're an endangerment to the other people that are in the market. Exactly. So what you don't want to do is don't ask for proof of a disability. Mm-hmm. So those little cards that they're printing off the internet, those are that's not a thing. I would so. <laughs> I would just say oh, I can't look at that. I'm not exactly. allowed to like look, view your medical right. documents. <laughs> Don't ask for any information regarding a medical condition. That's none of our business. That's not our concern. Mm-hmm. And it's it gets into other legal and issues. And it doesn't really matter. Like the thing yeah. is if it's mask or no mask, it's not reason for it. You know what I'm saying? So once you get into like little de- nitty gritty details, that's when they can kind of spin out. And at least in my experience, they want to like get really over explanatory with it with you. And that turns into a different conversation where it's about their disability as opposed to you may not come into this business without yeah. a mask on. And, and we're that's, not trained medical prof- yeah. professionals. Like that's... I can't make a call if that's yeah. your reason. Yeah. Yeah. We're not evaluating that. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to accept their view on whether or not they can wear a mask. Absolutely. That's fine. Mm-hmm. If they can't wear a mask... If they don't want to wear a mask, you can offer them a mask and mm-hmm. perhaps they change their mind. If they mm-hmm. decline that and don't, for whatever reason, want to wear a mask, mm-hmm. that's fine. That's mm-hmm. their right. But it's not their right to come into inside your market exactly. and expose yeah. other people. So yeah. you just need to be really clear about that. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. We can't allow anybody in the market without a mask. Yeah. And just stick to that. And sometimes it's just repeating the same thing over and over until it clicks. Calm me. Yeah. 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 But this resource is so helpful. We'll make sure to link it in the show notes mm-hmm. and share it widely. Yeah. Um, the Farmer's Market Legal Toolkit is an incredibly helpful source. Mm-hmm. We had a really awesome um, episode a couple weeks back about free speech that we know has been shared widely and people are really thankful for that. So yeah. we'll also link that in our show notes too if you want to revisit some <laughs> that uh, free speech topic. It's a good yeah. thing to, to talk about. It's good for we yeah. talk about free speech too. Yeah, yeah and it was we I, we just posted it on our um, Facebook and Instagram too. So if you follow us on social media, then all those links are on there as well. Great, right. great. So. Yep. So we have some other, uh, and this will be coming out in our newsletter soon too. We have some um, kind of de-escalation, conflict resolution things. There's a an acronym, CLARA, that a lot of people who work in this field use to in terms of de-escalation. So C is calm and center yourself. So just like you don't want them to react defensively, you need to not give them the impression that you're ask, acting defensively. Mm-hmm. You need to try to not be offended. This isn't about you. So it's, it's not personal. They're not angry really with you. That anger may appear to be directed towards you, but they're just angry because they can't send their kids to school. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> They've been stuck at home with their kids for so long. Right. It'll drive you mad, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Especially when they said they were going to open the schools in January, and now right. we're not. Yeah. So, yeah. Even so, if they're calling you names, it's not about you. It's not really about you. <laughs> it's so not. Yeah. calm and center yourself. Mm-hmm. L is for listen actively to the other person. Mm-hmm. So you really do want to hear what they're saying and why they're concerned. Yeah. There's probably a lot of concerns in there that you just simply don't have the ability to resolve. It's, yeah. it's not your mm-hmm. job, but li- everybody wants to be heard. And mm-hmm. that in itself can calm people down a lot, just to feel like somebody's listening yeah. to what their concerns are. Mm-hmm. Um, the A in Clara, the first mm-hmm. A in Clara is affirm what they're saying. 
And that doesn't mean that you need to agree with it. You don't yeah. need to agree that they shouldn't have to wear a mask. You don't need to agree <laughs> that COVID's a hoax, you which is usually what that. they're screaming yeah. at that point at you. <laughs> but you can affirm that I understand that you don't believe you should have to wear a mask. Yeah. Okay. We get that. We hear you. Mm-hmm. We understand that. Respond non-confrontationally. We can't allow anybody in the market without a mask. Yeah. Totally hear why you feel you shouldn't have to wear one. We can't allow anybody in the market without a mask. Yeah. And then add information if they seem open to it. That's because the CDC tells us that accommodating you by having you enter the market would put our other shoppers and our vendors and farmers at risk. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're going to do to allow you to get your farm fresh products without coming into the market. And that's when you want to go into your accommodations. But you just want to do all of that really calmly. In escalated situations, body language is really important. So Mm -hmm. you want to keep your hands down. You don't want to be waving at them and giving the impression that you may... (laughs) Be ready to knock them out. I will have my hand. I will have one hand in my pocket on my mace <laughs> and your whistle. And my whistle be ready to go. Okay. You want to make eye contact regularly, but not constantly. Did you know that? It's okay. kind of like when you deal you with stare them down. Yeah, you don't want to stare them down. That aggra- that's apparently aggravating <laughs> people. Did you know that? I've just discovered that in all my st- recent study on conflict escalation. Wow. So you do want to make eye contact to see, indicate that you're recognizing them and their personhood, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't want to stare at them because that pe- makes people nervous and can kind of escalate things. And you want to speak calmly, steadily, quietly, uh, or match their volume and slowly lower the volume. Yeah. So you don't want to fight that's with being chat. louder than them because then they're going to just ratchet up to mm-hmm. be louder than you. So the idea yeah. is to keep lowering the the level of conversation. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, you want to scream loudly for help yeah. <laughs> at a certain point. What about blowing your whistle? <laughs> right. but, I mean, and this, I think that like not all of our situations are extreme like this. Certainly we not. We are... Yeah. A little triggered because this last Saturday was really, really hard. So yeah, we had multiple, hard. multiple conflicts at we the had, exact same yeah. time with all three of us. We had a here. hard time. <laughs> However, a lot of the situations that we do encounter are people just like frustrated because they've been looking for the entrance of the market yeah. and they're a little upset because they are waiting in line. Yeah. yeah. And so usually it's things just by simply I usually like when people are upset they can't come in the exit, I say, you know what? I know it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. And we're under a lot of regulations and it would be so much easier for us if we didn't have to do these things, but we have to. And usually yeah, when I kind of right. say it lightly like that, people are like, yeah. yeah and they just kind of right. sigh and we can kind of just commiserate and just like joke about how this has been tough on everyone. And they usually say like, thanks and move on and follow the rules. So right. yeah. a lot yeah, of, this most de-escalation, of these things are going to yeah, get to that point. It's just yeah. kind of like listening to the person most of the time agreeing like, yeah, this sucks. We're all in this together and like, I'm sorry. And when you kind of just like do it like that, usually they end up begrudgingly following the rules. But this is really helpful to make sure that your your team has some of these tools in their tool belt. Hopefully they don't have to use them that frequently, but if they do have them, it comes in handy. Hopefully you won't be having to, you know, call in. some other force to help you, you know, (laughs) big dogs. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, I think it is true. I think I usually take the tactic like, oh man, I can't wait until we don't have to have an entrance and exit. Yeah. I'm really counting down the days till we, you know, I let, you know, I loved it when we didn't have to do this. Like one day we'll get back to that. Don't worry. But for now we just have to count everybody in and out. That's just the way it is. Like, you know, get those steps in, like, yeah. get, you know, get those Fitbit challenges going or whatever, you know, just make yeah. a joke about it. Yeah. And it seems to really deescalate because it really, it, it really truly is not about you. It's just they're frustrated and they're, you know, everyone projecting. is. They're projecting. Yeah. They, <laughs> they've been frustrated by other things. And yeah. They've just hit a tipping point right And like, minute. rightfully so. Yeah. yeah like, I think being able to recognize the fact that like, we're all under stresses right now. Yeah. And like, most of them aren't our fault, you know? Yeah. Like, they're things that have been you know, inflicted upon everybody that Mm -hmm. just like, at the end of the day, they just really are not fun or cool or anything that we want to have to deal with. Yeah. Everything's a little bit harder right now for everybody, no matter, you know, political or not, like everything's, no matter what side of anything that you're on, things are difficult. It's not easy for any side of anything. So I think just kind of keeping that in mind. And I think that when you were talking about like respond with information, I I find that people get a little more like ratcheted up if I'm trying to over explain. Right. Like be like, well, we have to, we answer to the city and we answer to the this and, uh, you know, where I don't, I don't want to have to call the police, da da da. And it's no, like, you don't really have to over explain that. You can just be like, look, these are the guidelines that we have to operate under. 
And then just kind of, that's all. I just kind of wait. <laughs> and 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 stop. That's what we have to do. That's true. I mean, yeah. it's, it's good to remember that anything you say can and will be held against you. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes less, less is, is more. more. Less is more. Yes. Less is more. So, yeah. So for most people, that is going to work. I think that there are instances where people are just out for blood for whatever reason. Yeah. They got... Trying to make a statement. Some, yeah. Something. Panties in a knot for some reason. And they're coming after you. And they're not going to let up. And so we're looking at new, at you know, some new ideas to kind of keep our staff coordinated. I think I tend to forget our market is kind of unique in that we have four separate blocks of the market. So our market runs on a street east to west. And then there's perpendicular streets north and south that cut through. So people have to cross the street. So our market is like four different sections. So we have four people working entrances. Four, four different, people working exits. And four people working right. exits. And two people working the information booth. And then <laughs> Kat and I try to roam around and do kind of crisis control. So it does get a little frustrating if a person has come in one entrance and thought they could do one thing and then they go into another entrance and someone's telling them that they can't. So we're trying to coordinate everybody a lot better like that. and do. We're, it's a good reminder to do some staff training, some retraining. Mm-hmm. Um, as staffers are leaving and we're hiring new staff or have volunteers that are helping out a lot, it's good just to get everybody on that same page and to make a plan, a safety plan, you know? Right. So I ordered whistles. Yeah, and what makes it additionally <laughs> keep everybody posted on that. <laughs> tough is we kind of have like jurisdiction within the market, but mm-hmm. then chopped in between are intersections that like we can't really control right. mm-hmm. what's going on in the intersection. So sometimes we're like, okay, we got this person out of the market who was giving us a hard time, but then they're just immediately outside the market in the intersection, <laughs> yeah. kind of causing us trouble. And then we're like, I hope they don't go into the next part of the market. Like, <laughs> right. We kind of do have these like, and... weird little corridors that we have to manage. But yeah. I think consistency really is key and mm-hmm. making sure that everyone's enforcing the rules equally because as we experienced on Saturday, it's really difficult for the person that does enforce the rule because all of a mm-hmm. sudden they have the weight of all the other <laughs> yeah. situations right. where they people didn't enforce the rule. Um, so yeah, just making sure your staff is all on the same page about things. Yeah, we're going to start using our walkie-talkies in kind of a different way. We've been using them to count in and out or just to ask kind of some questions about vendors. But I think having like a safety word I think is a good idea because what we're finding is that when we're doing when we're in a conflict with somebody at an entrance it's hard to it's hard for our staff to like dial our phone number and call myself or cat and say i need help with this person because they're like literally having a conversation with somebody and so using that walkie-talkie to tell the exit person or whoever call (laughs) robbie call robbie Kohlrabi. No, poor Kohlrabi already has a hard enough time. It already has a bad reputation. Yeah, we should say like strawberry or something yeah. like nice. Okay, right. Like fruit that gets all the glory. Right. Yeah, because also like who talks about Kohlrabi that much? Like if we say Kohlrabi, True. it's going to tip people. People are going to be like, wait a second. Wait no a one talks about Kohlrabi that much. You're up to something. <laughs> but right. if they can say that secret word to the other person on the, working the exit, usually depends on the block and what time of day and who's out and about. But the other person on the other end of that walkie-talkie is hopefully not also dealing with a conflict. Right. And so they can call and say, hey, Bridget, we have a problem at the entrance at Katnar. You need to get down there. Justin can't call you or something like that. Yeah. So just like getting that chain of command. Chain of communication. A more, kind okay, of, chain of yeah. communication a yeah. little more streamlined and smoothed out. And then blow that whistle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't have to blow my whistle, but I'm going to try yeah. it on Saturday. <laughs> You're looking at me like you don't. I just I'm looking at you like how weird is our job? You know we have we have pins and we're, we've seriously considered matching tattoos and say our job is weird. How weird is our job that we work at a farmer's market and we need a safe word? <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the other day at the info booth, I was wearing my our job is weird button. And some yeah. lady was like, I don't get it. And I was like, Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a name tag that says, Don't yell at me, please. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. It's, it's okay. Kind of like when you when you have that sign on the back when you've got a new driver. Yeah. It's like, be patient. This is a, a, a learning experience. Driver, yeah. Kind of thing. We I'm used to have try that it. for our trainees, actually, at the market. We used to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
Kind of. It was oh. like, I'm, like tra- baby I'm on training. Board. Yeah. yeah, baby, I'm born. I'm training. Be patient. Be patient. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Well, even though I'm not training, I just don't want you to yell at me. Right. I think I'm going to try it. Okay. I'm going to have all sorts of new tactics this week, so everybody watch out. We need to think of a <laughs> phrase that translates to don't yell at me, but that has a fruit or vegetable pun in it, though. Mm. Right? Oh. But it's then people are going to say, I don't get it. And I want them to understand that I just really don't want them to yell at me. It's not a joke or it's Maybe not this will be like a confusion tactic. <laughs> yeah, Maybe we should just get like shiny things that we can like shine to distract people. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have like a rain stick to calm situations. <laughs> <down>. <laughs> oh my gosh. Or like a wind chime. Yes. Okay. All right. A crystal Somebody- like, tuning bowl. <laughs> I like that one. I'm just going to go, oh, that's right. (laughs) All right, guys, try our calming tactics and get back to us. That's right. That's what we're doing. We'll update you on the next episode, how this all went And this is a good segue just to remind (laughs) people, I always, on the Sunday after our Saturday market, I really have to just like mellow out and not check my email a bunch of times, Mm -hmm. try to stay off social media, just kind of like enjoy a wind down day. Yeah. Go outside. Yeah. Enjoy the outdoors without having to talk to hundreds of people that are coming to the market. I usually don't go outside. I stay inside. I'm just outside all day the day before. With like blackout curtains. (laughs) That works too. Yeah. Whatever works for you. Just making sure that you're taking care of yourself because Mm -hmm. it is a really demanding job and... Like, it's not good for your immune system to yeah. have to be, to like, stressed. you know, to get stressed out. And so just make sure you're taking care of yourself. And that does, you know, also, like, you're if you're stressed, you're not going to be able to resolve these conflicts in a cool, calm, and collected way. You're not going to yeah. be able to manage your staff. So just make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Yeah, self-care yeah. is important. And remind your staff to do the same thing, to take yeah. care of themselves. Because not only are we dealing with a lot of stress, but we've had a lot of the ways that we deal with stress taken away from us. Mm-hmm. I was just having a conversation with another manager that said, you know, usually when I got really stressed out, I'd go have a massage after the market or uh-huh. I'd go. That would be so nice. <laughs> right? Yes. Well, we were talking about going to have a drink after yeah. the market. And we're she like, would say, or we'd go, I'd go to my girlfriend's house and have a bottle. Of, not a bottle. She's in a glass. <laughs> Maybe she's in a bottle um, of wine. And no judgment. Curl up on the couch and cry a little. Yeah. She goes, but I can't yeah. go to my girlfriend's house now. Yeah. So, it's uh, it's hard. We a lot of our coping mechanisms that we would usually count on a friend to yeah. whose shoulder to maybe literally cry on. Yeah, uh, we can't do that. We can't get a massage. We can't do I a lot sing of things. Karaoke. We do. I really miss karaoke. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't miss I that. We're like, oh, karaoke. We should do like that. Help distract people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about I just sing karaoke at the market? <laughs> Whatever. So trying to yell at be like punishment <laughs> for people that. In their timeout. We'll send them timeout and yeah. it'll be Justine singing them karaoke. <laughs> the karaoke machine. Oh my goodness. Listen, I'll try anything because yeah. that was wild on Saturday. I'm not yeah, down with that anymore. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not just us. No. I mean, uh, I don't want to make our market sound crazy, but I will tell you, I have heard so many stories from other market managers. I'm in a lot of kind of national groups and stuff of, of market managers and mm-hmm. it's not just us. No. There's some crazy yeah. things happening out there. For sure. Yeah. And, and luckily... You know, all the situations that we've had are things that we can handle and we've taken care of and it, no one's gotten hurt. And right. so, you know, we've yeah. been able to take care of the situation. So we're that's grateful right. for that. Yeah. yeah. But so, still phrase the nerves. That's right. Yeah. That's phrase the nerves. So we are moving towards maybe not a return to normalcy, but forward to better. Mm-hmm. We're sure of that. We have faith. So know that you're not alone and that we're all moving through this together. Remind yourself that food, community, and farmers markets participants are essential. So essential. That's right. We know it's not easy, but know that what you do is important. We appreciate every single one of you. That's right. On that note, have a great market, everybody. <laughs> we'll be good luck and good night. night. Good luck. Right. Good luck to you. Godspeed. <laughs> and we'll see you um, next time. Uh, next time. Next week on Tent Talk. Thanks, guys. Farmers markets are all about community, and all of us, operators, farmers, and vendors, keep learning. To learn what's happening from people just like you in various parts of the country, or share what's happening in your area, we have terrific conversations and people sharing resources over in our private Facebook group, the Farmers Market Pros Community. Please find us there, answer the three qualifying questions, and join the group. You can also message us on Instagram at Farmers Market Pros or send us an email at connect at farmersmarketpros.com. If you're just getting started in farmers markets, check out our Vendor 101 online course. And to go deeper, register for our annual Intense the Farmers Market Conference, 
live online March 15th through 18th, 2021. Learn more at farmersmarketpros.com. Thanks so much for listening to Tent Talk. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you access your podcasts and tell us and others how you're enjoying Tent Talk. If you're listening on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss our next episode. Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast is proudly produced by Farmer's Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine Marzoni Mead. Original music by David Mead. Thank you so much for listening today, and we'll have another great episode next week. Tune in.